Hello, you're with us. Hello. <laughs> Finally got there. What were you doing? You doing some more Keep Fit or something? <laughs> no, not quite. I've been having some trouble with my network, but it should work now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's it. Listen, you are <laughs> young. You're supposed to be up with it. You're like, you can't join an IG Live. What's going on? I know, what's going on? First Zero time shit. I've ever had to join one. So, yeah, I was having some technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you've practiced that line. You've done some technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah. Anyway, listen, um, you are on Instagram a lot because every time I turn a thing on, I see you jumping up and down or doing something. I mean, <laughs> there can't be anything left of you. you do, what are you doing? Yeah, I do a lot of fitness. Um, obviously, we can't go racing and I've not got any um, motorsport pictures to post about because we've, we've not <laughs> gone to any racetracks so yeah I've run out of content so I've taken it to uh, the garden and done more fitness and just been you know like videoing myself and doing home workouts so that people can kind of follow along and hopefully get some motivational um, stuff from me so yeah so how it goes. Well I'll be honest um, I watch you for about 60 seconds and I have to turn <laughs> off because I, I get a sweat just watching you it's like you just there's too much activity you're looking <laughs> good shapes that's great so you look like you're ready for the season ahead. Yeah uh, definitely I'm looking forward to it. Explain to uh, the guys listening at the moment what the season ahead is for you. Well I'll be competing in obviously the Carrera Cup GB um, and also, as a development driver for MB Motorsport, I'll be kind of hanging around with the team, seeing how their setup is, working with some of the guys, talking to the drivers, learning lots from them, and hopefully jumping in the car as well at the Snetterton test. So, yeah, all, all a lot of things to look forward to, really. But unfortunately, it's been put on hold for the minute, but just makes you more eager to kind of get started, I guess. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm sure you're uh, looking forward to it as much as what we are. And, and we're looking forward to you testing the car in July, hopefully, because Fingers as we crossed. understand it this week, it looks like that touring car test is going to be on at Snetterton. So um, fingers crossed and be great to see you have an outing in the car. And, and it will be your first time in a front wheel drive car, yeah? Yeah, well, I've never driven a front wheel drive car. So obviously that's going to be uh, one of the challenges for me jumping in the touring car. <clears throat> Well, it was a challenge for me last year, as you probably saw as me. So don't, don't worry too much. I'm sure you'll do a lot better than what I did. Um, no. Listen, so what we do every week, we have a few questions that get sent in. Uh, there's a few of them that are for both of us. So we'll, we'll have a little look at them and see what we've got. So what track have you not raced at that you would like most to race at? That's from Brian Davis. Any track in particular for you? Um, I'd love to race around Spa, but I've not had the chance to go there yet. So that's probably one of them on my list. Yeah, I think if you asked every racing driver, that would probably be in uh, at least top three circuits in a well to drive. And, and I'm sure when you get there, you will enjoy yourself no end. It's a fantastic circuit. Uh, my one's an easy one. I said it last week, actually. I think it's Bathurst or maybe the week before. I'd love to have gone to Bathurst, but um, that, that's probably never going to happen. So uh, <laughs> ooh, superstitions, routines before you race from from Sean, which I think is Sean Hollenby our team principal. So um, I don't know why he wants to know that for. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have any, actually. Um, I try not to get any because otherwise, if I didn't do it and then I got in the car and I thought, oh, God, I haven't done my superstition, I think I'd be the worst thing ever. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have any of those. <laughs> All right. Actually, I'm a little bit different. When I was in single seaters, I'd always have to get in from left hand side without foul. Otherwise, I just had to start the whole process again. Um, <laughs> And I used to get really wound up if somebody came along and like tapped me on the top of the helmet. Yeah, that is annoying. Yeah. You can't I don't do think that. People don't realise. I don't think they realise that there's a, a head and a brain inside there. And, <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, Jake Dobson, what are you most looking forward to when racing gets going again? Besides um, racing. Well, yeah, besides racing. Probably just the competition and the adrenaline rush. And yeah, just kind of getting back on track with all the guys. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. <laughs> Well, I, I guess that's a question in its own right. I mean, all the guys, you're going to be the only female driver in the Carrera Cup, yeah? Yeah, for the third year in a row as well. So it's crazy that there's not another female joining me on the grid. But yeah, yeah, again, I'm the only female there. Oh, well, listen, hats off to you on that. I think it's tremendous. Um, and, I, and I really am a, a big fan of, of female drivers. I think, you know, there's a, there's a, 
a lot of you girls now coming through the system, which is great. Um, yeah, I managed uh, a lady called Maria de Velotta. I don't know whether you, whether you saw Maria a few years back, but um, unfortunately, uh, very sad. She's no longer with us, but a uh, fantastic lady and a huge amount of talent. Um, yeah. And I have to say, from, from looking at you with your results, I think, you know, huge potential, uh, which is definitely why we signed you as our development driver, because we, <laughs> we think, you know, there's, I think our guys have got to be looking behind them, you know. The Jake and Sam have got to be worried about you. <laughs> coming in hot there you go coming in hot <laughs> right is mark keeping up your instagram fitness program brands hospitality that, that's no i'm not you're too fit for me uh, proudest non-racing achievement from emily what would that be um probably i'd have to say uh, i left school and didn't fancy going to university or anything like that and i went and got a job in the city of london as a accountant uh, so I went to an accountancy firm and started like learning on the job to become a chartered accountant. Uh, did that for about two years actually while juggling it alongside with my racing career and then the opportunity came along beginning of last year to um, participate in W Series so yeah that's kind of how my career in accountancy stopped and where it got a bit more serious into racing and juggling Carrera Cup and W Series last year. Well, I, I'm glad you told me that. I'll be a bit wary now when we do a contract next July with the numbers. Yeah? You, you, you've got your head around numbers. I, I'm really, uh, yeah, I'm really concerned. Um, and listen, give us a little bit of an insight from, from the beginning of your motorsport career. Where, where did it all begin? And was it from family or what got you into, into driving cars around in circles at high speeds? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all been kind of from family. So... Um, my granddad loved motorsport um, and he used to ride bikes, so he did motocross. And then my dad obviously got the motorsports kind of adrenaline junkie kind of thing from my granddad. So he did bikes as well, uh, started in motocross and then he moved into karting and did a bit of car racing as well. So yeah, I used to watch my dad and that's where it, I got um, the racing from. So The yeah, bug. That's where I got the bug from, yeah. Got the bug from. And I started in motocross myself. So uh, I like your dad and I like your granddad because that's my first, <laughs> my first sport on two wheels. Yeah. Um, so let's have a couple of questions that are aimed at you. So are you aiming for the BTCC and how excited are you to get behind the wheel of the Honda Civic? So, I mean, are you looking towards that as a future platform for your racing? It's not been like what I've set in previous years as like where I want to get to. Um, I've more looked at kind of endurance racing as um, my future prospects. And um, that's kind of what I've been looking at. But I've, I've always watched the British touring cars, always been interested in it. And obviously, I'm really looking forward to getting in the car and just um, driving that and seeing how it is for me and the taste of it. Um, so if an opportunity came about, of course, I would never turn it down, something like that. It would definitely be something I'd think about. Oh, I'm glad you said you wouldn't turn it down because we're, <laughs> we're putting the car on for you. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so will we see you in a BTCC car soon? Pit Lane Jamie, well, I think we've answered that. Uh, who inspired your motorsport career from Connor? I think we've said granddad and dad. Yeah. Yeah, we're wrapping up these ones quick, aren't we? <laughs> uh, your favourite girl power moment? from Charlie Gray. What, it, educate me, what is a girl power moment? Um, I'm not too sure. Maybe an <laughs> achievement that I've had in the past. Um, but I think maybe participating in a male-dominated sport is a massive girl power moment for me. Um, and being on a podium and sharing it with two guys, that, that probably falls into that category, maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, it's a good question for that. What is the biggest positive and the biggest negative of being a female in motorsport. Yeah. That's from Liliana. Sorry, I missed that question. Okay, so what is the biggest positive and the biggest negative of being a female in motorsport from Liliana? Okay, so the biggest negative, I'll go with that one first, um, maybe the stigma behind being a female in motorsports or mm. in any sport really. Um, and I think maybe you have to prove yourself a little bit more than maybe you do with others, especially in my sport being male dominated. And then biggest positive, I'd have to go with 
being in a male dominated sport, I think that is a positive for me. And I love competing against so many guys and kind of proving myself. And um, just kind of, I've got so much support from like younger girls and being like a motivational figure for them is uh, really inspiring for me. So I'd say that's a massive positive. Oh, okay, that's great. That is, that is good. And listen, um, I mean, you did the W Series last year, which was an, an all-female championship. Yeah. And, and what did you make of that? I mean, it, I was kind of like in two minds of it. It was sort of like, because for me, I just, I look at you as a racing driver, whether you're male, female, whatever the case may be, that you're a racing driver. So that's my view on it. So I was a little bit torn, if I'm honest, in, in an all-female championship, whether it was good or bad. But in saying that, I think the opportunity was fantastic. And, yeah, totally. you know, that's the main thing as well, just getting on a race car and, and doing what you can do. Brilliant. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's two ways of looking at it. And I think everyone has their own opinions. Um, I don't think like splitting males and females up is, is at all the right thing. But I'm not sure W Series want to do that. I think it's more um, making sure females are seen in such a male dominated sport and just kind of educating more females to get into racing. Um, and yeah, um, it, it was an and Did you put some money in the slot? What happened? <laughs> yeah, timed out. I had to, had to put some money back. No, I, I've got seriously bad internet connections. So sorry about that. Oh, no. It, it was me last week. The Wi-Fi. Yeah, don't, don't worry. It was me. It was me last week. So don't worry about it. it it's, it's okay. No, let's, yeah. let's quickly go back and ask somebody uh, else's question, which was Adrian King, to you, Esme. Yeah. What support do you have to help with your nerves and the mental side of racing? Um, I don't actually have any support. Um, but for me, I think uh, my dad's a massive part of my racing. So if I ever have any nerves or any stress, then I always talk out things with him. So, yeah, that's normally my kind of support who I go to and listen having nerves is is natural anyway yeah yeah so, for sure. and in a way I think it's actually healthy because and, and I don't know what you were like when you start a race but before I start I normally used to get a little bit of a rush and you, you'd have a little bit of a peak but then actually you'd get them under control and then when you get more experience you learn to sort of turn those negatives into positive and you feed off of it yeah definitely I think if you don't have nerves, something's going wrong. <laughs> you should definitely be nervous for a race, I think. I, um, but it's always at the start. You, once you get going, once the lights go green, you normally settle in, you settle your breathing and you're fine. Exactly that. And I think the breathing's a key one, actually. A lot of people don't realise it. Um, it. It does take a little bit of work to breathe inside a race car because it's quite easy yeah. to, to hold your breath for a whole lap and forget about breathing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So a couple more questions for you. Uh, you. May have already touched on this subject, but do you get fed up of people always asking, what is it like to be a woman in motorsport by Emily? Um, no, I wouldn't say I get fed up what it's like to be a female motorsport. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's necessary touching on the female side of it. You could mm. just ask what it's like being in motorsport because whether you're a female or male in in the sport doesn't actually matter, but that's just my view. Well, I think that's a good way to look at it. I really do. Adam P, favourite racing game. So have you, are you on computer console much or series? I am or... now. I've had to kind of turn to it seeing as we're not doing any racing. Can't lose the touch. So um, I use iRacing a lot um, more than any of the others. And how do you find it? I mean, I, honestly, I'm not great on Sims. <laughs> as most of my guys will tell you but uh i think at the end of the day it seems it is obviously a, the thing to be doing at the moment see a lot yeah, of the f1 guys a lot of people are doing it um yeah i find it all right i don't find it like super realistic um but it's great to like learn different tracks and just have fun so i've been doing a few races with the carrera cup gb guys and we've been participating every monday night which has been a laugh so yeah it's good fun just to kind of um, meet up on iRacing and just have a little battle out on there uh, racing against each other. Well, that's cool. 
Questionnaire, Toro text. How involved do you get with the technicalities of the car in terms of setup, springs, dampers, geometry? Oh, very technical question, that one. Go on, Esme, answer that. We don't, I don't personally get too involved in um, my mechanic setting up the car and what they're going to change and things like that. I more do the data side with my data engineer, go through everything, how the car's feeling. And if there's something that needs to be changed, then my data engineer and mechanic will obviously talk about it and they know what they're doing. I don't need to keep an eye on them and say, okay, how many mil are you doing here? And things like that. So yeah, they, they do all that kind of technical stuff and I just have to drive the car and do my job properly. I, I think things have changed a little bit over the years. So I think, if you'd have been like my generation, which is a long time ago now, I must add, <laughs> you, you'd get two different sorts of drivers. You'd get yeah. one driver that was very, you know, by the seat of their pants and would feel what the car was doing and then would ask for changes to be made. Mm. And they would basically have a guy there taking notes and, you know, the engineer was like a reference point just to cross-reference with the driver and the engineer. But there's also guys, and I was more of the other side, of actually coming in, relaying all the information and then letting the engineer work out what the next step was yeah and then going back out and absorbing it and then telling him whether it was good bad or indifferent and correlating that with the lap time more so now i think and probably what you relate to more is that a lot of the car is set up and a lot of data is already used to get the the baseline set up and there wouldn't be a great amount that would be going on across the weekend no exactly no i think that's pretty much the case um, right, this is a good question. Ooh, oh, it's a tricky one, this one. Will we ever see you as a teammate in a Bentley with your boyfriend, Jordan Pepper? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't mind being a Bentley factory driver, so that's uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, he's a, obviously a very talented racing driver, so... Uh, yeah, a good teammate to have, and we obviously get on well, so <laughs> I don't think it would go too sour. Uh, it's good that you get on well being as your boyfriend and girlfriend. That is, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, you'd relief. hope so, wouldn't you, really? Yeah. yeah, and is he nearby? Is he close? No, he's not, actually. Oh. He, he uh, lives in Germany, but okay. he's been with me through lockdown, so, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. So, it's a good one. From Dan, Remix V9, interesting name. Uh, how much did you learn from racing in a W series and in a single seater car? Uh, I, le I learned a huge amount. Obviously, um, a single seater is totally different to anything I've ever driven before. So, yeah, there was a lot to learn in such a short space of time, really. Um, we only had the, the practice, quality and one race. And to learn all that and also going to so many different tracks that I'd never been to ever... Um, all in over Europe I had to learn that along with the car and yeah it was it was a lot of learning to do so I definitely learned a lot so in that respect uh, how many laps did it normally take you to learn a circuit because I'm quite interested in that um uh probably about three to five maybe mm -hmm. to learn it and then obviously there's a lot of work that you've got to do to to be fast around the track but to actually learn it and know where i'm going yeah probably that well, i would i would say that's pretty impressive um because i'd say most good guys can get a track under the belt in like within eight to ten laps in terms of up to speed so if you're learning it within three to five laps and get up to speed you're doing well i mean that's great I think those are short circuits, though. So maybe the longer ones would take a, a lot more. I, I would agree. <laughs> Don't ask it? me how many, how many laps I'd have to do around the Nürburgring to work out that one. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, that is, that is a circuit. I've, I've been on the North Slider, um when I was a little bit older in my career. And I will tell you now, it's the one circuit that I vowed I would never go back to. <laughs> I think my dad says the same about that one. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, he uh, despises it. Yeah, not for all the tea in China will you get me back there. That, that, uh, <laughs> that place is unbelievable. So, but there you go. So, <clears throat> you think you're probably going to be kicking off quite soon by the sounds of things with the the, uh, the Porsche Carrera Cup Series. That, that doesn't sound like too far away because we're, what, looking at August time maybe to get racing underway? Yeah, it looks kind of that, that soon. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Nothing gets postponed any longer. And driving a Porsche. 
It's a little bit different, huh? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, the Crow Cup car is tough. It takes a while to learn, and it's totally different driving style to anything um, I've driven before. I I would totally agree with you on that. I've talked to a few, uh, even like F1 guys like me, then they used to do the celebrity car in the Super Cup rounds, and even past world champions all said the same thing. Incredibly difficult cars to drive and, and get an understanding of, just for that, that real engine configuration and the uh, the technique to drive them quite quite different from most. Yeah. So you're in good company, put it that way. <laughs> uh, well, a couple more questions for me. What tips do you have for someone starting their first season of racing at 42 years old from Andrew Cohen Ray? Well, I, you can answer that as well as me, but I, I mean, I think from my side of things, it doesn't really matter what age you are. If you can dedicate yourself to, uh, to getting as much information, as much track time, uh, and as much understanding of what a car does underneath you, you'll, you'll pick it up quite quickly. The, the yeah. biggest thing for me is, is pure racing. There's no substitute for actually racing and getting competitive with other people on the circuit. So I think that's where you'll, you'll need to work it as hard as you can, because as you know, Esme, that's, that's something quite different. Being yeah. on a track on your own and then being with another 25 people around you is a little bit of a different feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, hugely different. And uh, actually, my dad started racing in a car from the age of 27, so it's never too late. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here first. It's never too late. Although it is for somebody like me who's hung up the helmet and gloves. Uh, what do we got here? Who's your motorsport idol? Esme, you got a motorsport idol? Um, not particularly. Um, I wouldn't say I have a motorsport idol, um, but there's people who I do watch from time to time, I guess. And yeah, I like Charles Leclerc in F1. Uh, yeah, but I don't think I have a motorsport idol. Why, why is that? Is that because he's a suave, good looking racing <laughs> driver or, or because he's actually very good? Well, to both, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I've done both categories. <laughs> At least you're honest. And, uh, if Jordan's watching, I, I think we're having a chat with you after this. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Simpson, what's your favourite track, Esme? Um, my favourite track, I had the opportunity of going to Monza two years ago um, and I fell in love with that circuit. Um, but if I was going to say a track in the UK, it would be my home circuit, Brands GP. Well, that's a good choice. It's a very, very good choice. And, and Monza is special huh? when you yeah. when you go into the park even before you get to the track it, for me it's like the hairs in the back of my neck go up i mean it's one of those special places it really is yeah i absolutely loved it there and uh the italian fans as well they're great <laughs> they, they are indeed yeah incredibly passionate and uh and well educated as well and did you go to the banking did you go to the old bank yeah i did yeah i went to the old banking which is absolutely insane how they used to drive there so yeah it's just amazing to go there it's just so much heritage there yeah awesome place awesome place hey listen uh we've been half an hour um we've had a few technical difficulties we on the have. journey <laughs> yeah but i want to say a, a very big thank you for uh, giving us some of your time this evening um no worries. Great to have you with us in MB Motorsport as our development driver. And we really are looking forward to having you in the car for the test as soon as we get that up and running, which we all hope is soon. Um, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm going to be watching out to make sure you're doing your fitness on Instagram. <laughs> uh, but more than anything, I think you'll join me in saying that 8 o'clock Thursday night, we all go outside, put our hands together and uh, clap for the frontline workers and the NHS people and everybody who's looking after us at the moment. Definitely. In these crazy times, yes. Yeah? So, um, big thank you from me. And Esme, best of luck, huh? Thanks very much, Mark. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.